Okay, now that I've got the uh, cooling system drained, flushed, and refilled, got a uh, nice fresh coolant in the reservoir with a 50-50 mix of distilled water and antifreeze, and um, got no leaks around any of the hoses that I took off, and especially the upper radiator hose, looks like I was never in there. Got the original hoses and original hose clamps put back in the proper position. So that's all squared away, and uh, now what I want to do is um, see what I can do to make the uh, power steering system last a little bit longer. And even though the car does have just under 12,000 miles on it, um, the steering system in here is nice and tight and very precise, and I want to keep it that way. I don't want to have any kind of excessive wear going on. The steering gear is right there with that number written on it kind of buried under there. Pretty difficult to replace and very expensive. And uh, so there's all the reason in the world to make that last as long as we can. And uh, this is the reservoir. It's got two connections to it. It's got this uh, larger 5 8 connection which goes right directly to the pump. And then it's got this 3 8 inch hose that serves as the uh, return line that uh, comes right off the gear. And just like in the F-150, or I, I'm sorry, F-250, I keep getting them mixed up, uh, I'm going to take off this return hose and run into a container and completely flush out the power steering system. And then I'll go in there with um, one of these uh, magnifying filters to prolong the life of the system. It's got a magnet in there, just like in the transmission, as well as a full flow filter, just like for the engine. Because these systems are closed systems, and they don't have any kind of filtration in them to speak of. There's a little tiny um, screen inside the uh, reservoir here to catch some of the big chunks, but um, they're completely filterless, and they do last a long time, but I want all the tolerances in here to be to OEM spec. I want this to last as long as it possibly can. And <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and use a new section of just uh, straight 3 8 inch hose, because it looks to me, and I might be wrong about this, but it looks to me like the original return hose is molded. And I don't want to mess that up. I want to always have a fallback plan or a plan B. It's still nice and supple. And um, so I'll keep that aside as a spare. And then it gives me plenty of length to uh, play around with some of the routing to get this filter in here. So uh, I just wanted to take advantage of the, the nice weather we're having. It's um, about 55 degrees out here and clear and uh, I want to get all this stuff done before the really hard winter time gets here where it's hard to work on cars. So the first thing I've got to do is uh, gain more clearance to all this stuff by taking off the uh, intake plenum and air box and mass airflow sensor and air temperature sensor assembly and get rid of that and um, see what we have afterwards. There's a hose here for the PCV system you have to just pull off. This hose right here just pulls out and then you've got a bolt there and then this bolt here on this aircraft clamp and the whole thing just slides right off. So let me do that next and I'll be right back. Okay now I've got the intake, uh, air, the air box removed and intake plenum and everything just like before with the uh, cooling system or coolant flush and the next step is to get prepared because this always makes a mess what we're going to do is pull off this return line and when that happens the fluid in here is going to start to drain out of the return line so I've got a little bit a little uh, tray under here and uh, a towel to uh, absorb most of it and catch most of it <coughs> and uh, what we're going to do to get this off you could use regular pliers for these clamps like we have over here but uh, those clamps look just like these clamps for the uh, coolant hoses. And so we're going to use the um, special tool again. And um, just so you guys know, some of it's kind of rusted. If you wanted to buy a tool like this, let me get out here in the sunlight. Uh, that's the number for it. It's a Craftsman 9-4739, I believe. This thing is well worth the money and it's not really that much money actually 
compared to the time you save. So we'll uh, set you up over here and uh, show you how to get that clamp off. It's actually pretty straightforward. So what we'll do is we'll take the pliers in one hand and get the business end of the tool in a comfortable position, slip that over the uh, hose fitting and gradually squeeze down on it until you get resistance and then go ahead and squeeze fully until the tool locks. Just kind of rock it back and forth. and uh, get that out of the way as much as you can and set the tool aside. And now what we have to do is work this hose off of here and I'm prepared with a uh, cap. I'm going to try to cap this immediately to avoid any kind of mess and then we'll have our system exposed. Just be gentle with it. You don't want to break the nipple off of the uh, reservoir because it is the uh, holiday season and everybody's closed. You won't be able to find another one. It just takes time. It's almost ready to come off. We'll immediately go up with the hose, put your finger on the opening there, and go on with your your plug. And I think that minimized the mess there. That hose came off with a fight, but it did finally come off. So that's what we end up with. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, try to route this hose to a catch can. I may just go ahead and take the hose off entirely and use a uh, kind of a junker hose and route that down through the driver's side wheel well into a bucket. But some fluid came out, but it was very well controlled. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop that off again and take a sample. And uh, set myself up with a good uh, drain strategy and I'm thinking that this car I think that I can just leave the engine off and run the wheels left and right with the steering wheel and uh, use the gear to pump all that fluid out so we'll see if I'm able to do that hopefully I can okay I've got the uh, original hose return hose off of the car and it really is a molded hose so I want to save that for a rainy day that's going to be a dealer only item probably and I've got a uh, much longer 3 8 inch hose coming off that return line and going through the uh, driver's side wheel well into a uh, catch container and you can already see the fluid draining out just under pressure under the slight gravity feed of pressure and I've already got the wheels cocked to one side and I think what I'll do is I'm going to go in here with the uh, regular Type F fluid. The car does call for a Type F. And then once I flush the system completely through with the uh, uh, less expensive fluid, I'm going to go in here and use the uh, synthetic uh, Type F equivalent fluid. This will give me much better cold weather performance and uh, much better anti-wear capability. So the one thing we want to do is just make sure that the reservoir doesn't run dry. And we got some fluid in there. In fact, I'm going to add uh, just a little bit more. Because what you don't want to do is uh, get any kind of error in the system. Otherwise, you got to start it all over again. That looks like about enough. And um, what I'll do is 
operate the wheels from left to right without the engine running and then you'll be able to see how the fluids flushed out So hopefully you guys can see the much higher flow rate there coming out now that the wheels are turned in the opposite direction and I'm just going to keep doing that going uh, left to right to left to right while continuously monitoring um, what our fluid level looks like in the reservoir until that fluid comes out nice and clean. And then when it does, I'll go ahead and do the same process with the um, synthetic fluid. And um, then I'll be able to proceed and go on and install the uh, magnifying filter. Just wanted to show you guys real quick, now that the reservoir is almost dry but not quite, there is indeed a little filter screen down in there and you can see some debris, some of the larger debris stuck on that filter screen. Cars didn't, e didn't even used to have the filter screens on there, some of the older ones. So that's why it's really important to uh, put an inline filter on here. That's going to do an even better job than what this uh, filter screen can do. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it up and carry on. Okay, so now we're done with the bleeding of the power steering system and uh, we now have the final product here. This is just a standard inline filter. I reused the uh, OEM clamps on the extreme ends of the filter. And then I used the um, clamps that they gave me for the uh, filter itself. Just regular screw clamps. And you just kind of want to pick a position um, in the engine compartment where you're not going to have interference with a filter rubbing against the brake lines or uh, other hoses or the uh, air cleaner assembly which I have yet to put on but I just wanted to kind of show you guys um, what it looks like once it's installed get a better angle of it there and um, it's just a really good idea to use these filters. They're very good filters and they're very easy to replace. You just take off the two clamps and pull it out, drain it off and flush out your system again. I now have the uh, nice uh, synthetic fluid in here to um, protect the power steering pump and power steering gear, both very expensive parts to replace. And um, that'll keep this thing um, driving uh, just like new. A lot of people don't bother to change their power steering fluid, let alone uh, make aftermarket improvements like this inline filter. Um, and they end up with uh, growling power steering pumps and leaky steering gears, which uh, I recently found out would fail inspection. And um, the car just kind of wears out. You know, you end up with like two inches of travel on the steering wheel before the car actually responds. and yeah, the car will drive, but doesn't doesn't drive like um, OEM specs, which is what I'm after. So hopefully with this uh, slight modification, and I've kept the old hose around just so I can get back to original if I wanted to. Hopefully with this slight modification, this thing will um, last almost indefinitely. Let me get the uh, intake plenum put back on in uh, air box and see what it looks like. Okay, so there's the complete job. Got the uh, air box and intake plenum put on. And that's what the filter looks like installed. And there's just enough clearance between the intake hose and the filter to be acceptable. So the engine's able to move around a little bit and not have interference problems. And uh, that's pretty much the only modification I like to do to cars, is to prolong their longevity. I like to keep everything original. and. Um, I like these big old cars like the uh, Crown Victorias. Um, 
they're just a lot of fun to drive and uh, I want to keep it for a long time and keep it running as uh, long and as good as I can and um, don't mean to I don't mean to endorse certain products but the uh, Amsoil Super Shift is really the only fluid I could find only synthetic fluid I could find that um, is a type F replacement for the power steering fluid and uh, you could have easily done this job with regular Ford type F fluid or Pennzoil type F or anything you wanted I just think I'll get a lot better performance with uh, synthetic fluids and you want to make sure that you, you have the right kind of fluid in here. Type F is a depreciated fluid specification. Uh, it was used mainly back in the 70s and 80s. And there's not a lot of people uh, making or putting any more research and development into uh, Type F fluids anymore. So that's the only one I could find. But you want to make sure that you use the, uh, the right kind of fluid in your system, not just a generic power steering fluid or a regular Dextron transmission fluid because you will have problems with... Um, seal compatibility and things like that. So that goes ahead and completes most of the maintenance work on this thing. The only thing left I have to do now is uh, bleed the brakes and that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge than the F-250 because this has um, anti-lock and traction control. This is the uh, valve body and motor assembly down there and I gotta find a way to flush all the fluid through this so I get a nice complete bleed. It usually involves uh, finding a way to run that pump down there but um, I'll check the uh, service manual for that. But anyway, just wanted to share with you guys um, some ideas on how to make your uh, car last a little bit longer and drive better, be more reliable and be more fun to drive and save a lot of money on replacement parts. You know, power steering pumps and power steering gears are quite expensive and why go through all that if you could just put a filter on here and flush out your fluid and have it last for a lifetime.